Joe, thank you so much for joining me and inviting me to your favourite bar, Flannery's in Camden Street. Thanks a million, Gary. Yeah, um, it's been a little while since I've been in there myself now, but I spent many a good night inside the Flannery, so I said this would be the perfect um, venue to bring you to um, virtually for today. It's great. It looks great. I've been in many places up and down the world at this stage, but it's my first trip to Camden Street. So Flannery's, I think by that accent you weren't born and bred in Dublin so oh, no. how did this all that. happen? That's it yeah so Clareman originally so um, obviously Flannery's and Coppers they were always the, the stomping grounds around Dublin so um, yeah I've been living up here for I suppose the of 20 years now at this stage wow. um, and um, yeah just it was always, a, always the go-to spot you know myself and my friends so Were you in college is, first was that was that what brought you to Dublin College or was it a woman? Um, no, it was, it was actually um, work. Yeah, so um, I served my time as an electrician, um, let's say from 18. And um, I think I was probably maybe 21 when um, when I was sent up to Dublin on my first job up here. So, um, yeah, I've kind of, I suppose Dublin's been my base then for the majority of the time. And Apart from that, I suppose I've worked a bit all over the world and whatnot, but I've always found myself coming back to Dublin. So yeah. There's certainly not a hint of a Dublin accent there. You're proud of the Clare background, I think. Well, that's it, you know. Well, I've had to tone down the Clare a little bit, you know, so it's it's, it's a bit more neutral than it might have Give been. Give us a bit of Clare. Give us a bit of Clare while you're on. <laughs> Astra, you know yourself. like. <laughs> I know, I know. It's just wonderful. So yeah. in terms of... Um, Apprenticeships, just while we're on them, the, the, isn't it great? Isn't it great in one regard to see that the, some of the snobbery is starting to go out of the, the the term apprenticeship, and you're starting to see it coming into legal firms and all sorts of firms. Where whereas there was a time when when it wasn't as as vogue. So I mean, you're you're a great product of it, and so many people I know are also. It's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well. I mean, I suppose it's uh, you're learning the nuts and bolts of your trade, really, aren't you? Um, and then I suppose it sets you up as well um, for you know further in your career. Um, I did actually. I ended up going back to do my engineering degree after the fact. So I suppose I went back as a mature student. Then um, what was that? That was probably two thousand and nine, I think. Um, so yeah, I did um, did my four years in DIT Kevin Street. Just around the corner from Flannery's as well. So oh, full time, um, was it? Did you did you yeah, work? Yeah, yeah, went, went went back full time. Yeah. Oh. So I um, did the full four years. Um and uh yeah, that was that was great. I suppose it was it was during the recession as well. So right. it was kind of you know, it, it kind of tied in well. I was always going to go back and do it at some stage. So um, nice, yeah. I, 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 like I like the idea of it. But I'm not just sure, sure whether I, I thought about it a few times, but uh, then I started thinking about my old Irish teacher or my old English teacher and I started twitching. So listen, thanks a million for bringing us to Flannery's. Um, so we're up there at one of those little uh, stools and uh, Miss, Mr. Vodafone is after wiping your phone, right? And you're left with three apps. Are there three apps that you can pick? That will be the three you must have. Okay. Um definitely WhatsApp. WhatsApp is I suppose that's the that's the main form of communication now, isn't it? It's quick, it's snappy, um, everybody has it, it just works well. Um, so I don't think I'll be able to work without WhatsApp. I mean, we even use it during work as well, you know, create WhatsApp groups and it just kind of helps for coordinating things around the project and whatnot. Um so WhatsApp would be probably my number one that I would keep. Um, I would say number two, Netflix. Um, can't right. beat a bit of Netflix. Uh, so, you know, traveling with work at times, um, it's handy just to kind of, I suppose if you're on a flight or if you're in an airport, um, just throw on the headset and throw on the phone and just watch a bit of Netflix, you know. <laughs> just to, just to I hope it's your own. Money. I hope it's your own account because they're they're clamping down on this eight eight people with ninety subscribers or something. <laughs> no, it's my own account. I think there might be other people jumping onto my one, but I'm definitely paying for it anyway. I'll tell you. <laughs> you obviously don't have teenage kids, then, do you? <laughs> no, 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 definitely not. <laughs> That's good. Uh, so, what's the third? What's your third one? 
Um, I did the the sports app, the forty two. I suppose, um, yeah, every day I'm always on that, just kind of keeping up to date with, um, you know, the teams I follow or, you know, general sports, um, I suppose. <laughs> For me, Sin's a Clare Harland fan and Munster rugby fan. So, you know, we, we try our best. Um, you know, we're, we're always thinking this could be the year, but we'll, we'll, we'll have to see now. And is it particularly bad when you go home and you look at Limerick in the hurling is... Because cause, cause a lot of people would have spent a lot of time in Limerick, even from Clare, up bars yeah. and stuff. Is yeah. it tough? Like, is it tough? Every opportunity that they wind in your... Do you know what? Fair play to them, I say. Uh, I've got some team, and when you get a team like that together and it stays together and it's successful, you know, more power to them. And it's up to everybody else to come up and match them. And unfortunately, now the last couple of years, we haven't been able to... I suppose most of the other teams haven't either, you know. Um, they were close though. Did you run them close? Ah, uh, we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We brought them to extra time, and yeah. you know, we, we might beat them in the league here and there, but we just haven't yeah. got over the line in the championship against them. So, um, did you play? I, I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeez, I played for years, and I played above in Dublin as well when I moved up to Dublin. So, um, yeah, I've always, I've always enjoyed the hurling, and I suppose being from Clare, that's kind of bred into you from from a yeah. young lad. Um, you know, going to the games and all to that, and again, Flannery's was always a great spot after the Clare Hurling <laughs> matches. You know, we get to get to meet all the other county supporters as well. So okay, so you were an apprentice. You went back to college. It's now hurling. So did you, come on, you have shares in this place, do you? <laughs> and this, <laughs> they, <laughs> we're sitting there. Your three apps are put off on your phone, and the door opens. Who would you love, dead or alive? To be coming in for a pint with you. Um, well, that's a good one. Um, I guess one of my uh, yeah one of my big heroes as I was growing up was always Roy Keane. Um, so I was a Man United fan as well. I suppose still am a Man United fan. Uh, just I might not openly admit it as much as I used to. Over the um, over the last three to five weeks, there's been a lot of people who were hiding. Now that yeah. there's a few <laughs> pins under your belt, but yeah, I get it. I get it. Yeah, so I suppose Kino, yeah, Kino was always, um, he was always a big role model. Um, you know, the leadership skills, I mean, he was he was basically the driving force behind that Man United team that was so, so successful down through the years. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd, lo I'd love to pick his brain. Um, you see him now on the on the Sunday afternoon, um, you know, and he's he's given it, running in his two pence worth. And, you know, all, all of his points, I think, 99% of the time are valid. You know, he, he sees players now who are on a lot more money than he would have been on. Um, and they just don't seem to have, I suppose, the the heart and the commitment that he would have shown when he was on the pitch. Um, you know, like I say, again, same with Kino. You know, he, he'd he be probably the first to admit that he was never the most skillful player in the world. But he was he was rarely beat. You know, and that that was that was probably the main thing. He would he would make sure he would work harder than everybody else to make sure that his team um won. So yeah, I'd, I'd love to have a chat with him. He's a bit of crack, and I, I love the the kind of stoke, you know, um, look yeah. that he gives. You know, the other pundits when they're giving his their opinion as well. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's just he, he's just a real character, and I think that's that's what you want really when you're going out for a point. Somebody a bit of crack, and you know, you know, you're so right. And, and also, when I think of people like him, the authenticity of Keane, you know, you know, that what you see on the punditry is actually what you'd see if he came into Flannery's. Absolutely, although Absolutely. You, you know, you see others and they you, you just know that they have a show face and when they go home face, yeah, and uh. You know, it brings me to something. I mean, obviously, you guys are, are, are starting on your journey of entrepreneurism and all the rest of tech, but uh, it's important, isn't it, to have different characters in your team? You can't, oh, all, you can't all be center forward. You need Keen and you need Keens and whoever the goalkeeper was then. Um, you need all different types. <laughs> yeah. who, was it? who was it then? Peter, Peter Schmeichel. Big yeah. personality too. Yeah. Wow. Big and, personality. And, and, in fa and in fairness as well, if you look back, I mean, Keane and Schmeichel, they don't talk now. They they had a very... Um, oh, yeah. It, it was a purely professional relationship, but that just shows the 
you know, that they pushed each other on to be so so successful back then. Um, you yeah. know, they, they probably had many disagreements in dressing rooms, but once they hit the pitch, that was it. They were part of the one team. And, you know, they, 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 there's there's always going to be a little bit like that, you know, in any team, there's going to be a bit of rivalry. There's going to be, I suppose, guys challenging each other. Um, but you need that. Um, so, you know, and that, that that's pretty much what we're trying to implement as well with Tekle. Um, you know, you've got myself, uh, Brendan O'Mahony, Darren O'Mahony, the other two directors. Um, you know, we, we all have different perspectives. Um, it's a case of let's, you know, let, let's brainstorm, let's throw everything out on the table, right? What do we think is the way forward? And then once we commit, the team commits and that's it. Is all monster, man? Uh, two carry, one clear. Yeah. Oh, really? I know here. Diversity. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, right. Uh, we, we, we have a couple of you're as though. diverse. You're as diverse as the border of Munster. <laughs> but you're prepared to take anybody else's money. Is that it? You're prepared Absolutely. to take money from any county and any country. Yeah, no <laughs> But you know, going back to the diversity of teams and mindsets and stuff, it is true um, that that particularly sport, like when you play a bit of sport, like you did in Harlan, we mm-hmm. all want to be DJ Carey. <laughs> But someone has to be the left half forward and stuff like that. And, and, and it's, it's trying to find young people, old people, we're all the same. We all want the, the adrenaline rush. Yeah, damn. And is that what drove you on? Is there a young enough uh, outfit? Is that what it drove is. you on to is that what drove you on to do something? Yeah. yeah your definitely. Own team? definitely. Um, you know, when when you're working for other companies and you're giving it your all, um, you want to make sure that you know you're making that company successful. So it, it's been something that's been in the back of our minds for a few years. Um, we, yeah, we first met maybe four years ago on a project in Denmark. We were all part of one team. We got on very well. Uh, project was very successful. So um, it's something we've been talking about for a while. And then last year we just bit the bullet and said, right, let's go for it. Um, you know, let's let's get some skin in the game and let's see if we can make a go of it ourselves and, you know, try, try and make some inroads into the industry. Um, you know, I think individually we all probably would have had relatively decent relationships from the projects that we would have been on, the companies we were working with. So, you know, it, it, do, it definitely does help then when you're trying to drum up some business for yourself and, you know, go back to some of the old contacts and say, look, we're here now and, you know, if you've got some work available, we're willing to do some business. I guess as 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 we're all finding and we're all talking about quite a lot, it's quite extraordinary and growing the, the amount of network opportunities within the Irish companies and people yeah. in the digital yeah. infrastructure space. And uh, it's one of our great dividends exporting this expertise. And you, you even said to me before we came on air, uh, quite a few of your lads are not working in Ireland at all. Yeah, that's that's correct. And we've got, let's say, people working with us who aren't from Ireland. Um, you know, so we've got different languages. We've got different nationalities. Um, it's great, really. It's, it kind of brings a little bit of uh, a mixture to the team. We're not just all Munster men, you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and for an elephant uh, like me, it, it's just... It's, I, I'm just amazed and I love it so much, I have to say, because because I come from a, the gang that we were just exporting people. We weren't exporting yeah. expertise. And to yeah. see this next generation coming through like yourselves who have seen the potential, you don't have the fear um, of either success or failure. It just is what you want to do. Um, it's just a wonderful thing to see. Uh, and, uh, yeah. But um, yeah, no, I, I fully agree with you. And you know, um, I suppose we've we've kind of we've we've played both sides of the fence. We've we've gone away. I, I went to Australia for two years myself um, after I finished my apprenticeship, and you know, backpacking, traveling, you know, living and working over in another country, brilliant experience. Um, but then you know, you, you bring it back to Ireland again, and I, I think that's probably one thing Ireland needs to work on is actually make it easier for people to come into the country. Um, I, I know it has; it, it's probably improved in the last number of years. Um, you know, with all of the big tech firms um, setting up, I suppose, European headquarters in Dublin. Um, but you know, there's been times where we've been trying to, you know, engage people and get people on board with us and. There's just a lot of roadblocks in the way. Um, you know, I think I think maybe that's something the government needs to look at. 
um, you know, regards critical skills, visas and things like that. Um, you know, we need to we need to start importing people. <laughs> like you say, many for many, many years, Ireland has exported people to Canada, the States, Australia, New Zealand, elsewhere. Um, it's time to start bringing people in and, you know, growing yeah. the country, growing the economy even more. I think we should let all monster people move to Lancaster. Yeah. <laughs> there, there, and we, we should get those grants, you know, those grants. You know what? If there's a, if there's a grant, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a farmer coming out. You know, your neighbours farmers. But um, thanks a million. It's been short and sharp. And congratulations. Obviously, we didn't dwell too much on it, but uh, you are our pro bono partner, winner, and host in Ireland for this year. After a country. Thank you much, Gary. Yeah. So um, best of luck with the rest of the year. Thank you for your time. It's been really interesting, and uh, I'm sure. We'll get to Flannery's in person to watch, a, to watch an Arsenal versus United match. <laughs> we're, we're, we're really looking forward to actually working with you guys over the next year and going forward as well. So thank nice. you very much. You're very welcome. Thank you, Joe. Cheers, Gary.